Hey everyone, I'm Letizia, I'm a makeup artist and I had too much coffee today and I started this video at least 25 times because I just, I'm just new to sitting in front of the camera. But welcome to my to the first part of my editorial masterclass. I have four looks in total, so four parts. If you guys already know me, just um, you can decide. You can just... Um, skip to this timestamp because this is where the editorial, the makeup or the masterclass or the looks um, actually start. Um, if you guys are new here, hi, welcome, it would be amazing if you would uh, stay and uh, subscribe. I'm going to post a lot, a lot of fun stuff and maybe different stuff and I don't know, also real stuff, maybe, I don't know, problems and issues that just regular women deal with. Before we start this um, editorial masterclass, I wanted to tell, to say a few words about what editorial means. So editorial makeup is actually, it's makeup that's uh, meant to be photographed. Doesn't matter if it's for a magazine or for, I don't know, for someone's personal portfolio or for a campaign or for social media. It's just meant to be photographed. So this is why um, you will see that maybe the skin is a little bit too glowy or I haven't said it. So don't, don't come for me, please, because it's it has a purpose. Um, it means it's much easier for the person who is retouching the photo to retouch it. <laughs> because when you put a lot of product or especially when you add powder or dry products, it adds a lot of texture to the skin. This is why it's a little bit different than maybe you are used to seeing um, on the street or maybe you're used to like, I don't know, applying on yourself. Yeah, so have fun with that. And I'll see you in the next part. This is my beautiful model. Um, as you can see, she doesn't have uh, the most perfect skin. She has a few blemishes. So I'm going to show you how to manage that on an editorial shoot. First, I'm cleaning everything up with um, some micellar water and uh, make sure everything is ready for my skincare or my skin prep. Um, Sometimes models are coming with their own um, skincare applied, so I want to make sure everything is compatible with my foundation. Um, then I'm using a sugar lip um, scrub. This one is from Beauty Baker. You can use any lip scrub you, um, you prefer. It's super important to prep um, the lips before um, any shooting because especially if you're going uh, really close um, with the shots, you can see the dry lips or the dry um, skin immediately and it's hard to retouch. Then I'm going with um, Lana Lips Lip Ointment, my favorite uh, lip balm. Um, if the lips are a little bit drier, then I go with a heavier, um, with a heavier layer. For uh, skin prep, I'm using the face base from Lano Lips and Dear Hydration from Vanilla. First, I'm going with the Dear Hydration one because it's water-based and it um, plumps up the skin and it um, it sinks in faster into the skin. And then I am uh, sealing everything um, up with the face base and um, make sure the skin is ready for foundation. Ideally, I would uh, wait 10 minutes um, for the um, skin prep to really settle. Um, meanwhile, I will start with the skin prep and then do the hair maybe, so it has time to kind of sink in. Um, um, as you can see, I have a few issues that I need to um, address on the skin and I'm going to show you a few tricks I use. Um, so I don't use a lot of foundation to cover up the skin texture. When I have smaller blemishes, one, two uh, blemishes on the skin, I use the aqua, aqua brow to kind of make beauty marks um, out of those blemishes. Or if um, I have more uh, blemishes, like in this case, then I will use the makeup designery, um, the airbrush foundation because it's super thin and super pigmented and um, it's also uh, waterproof and uh, it sits well on the skin. 
My favorite foundations um, I like to use on editorial are the La Mer, the foundation, um, and um, I also like the Sukyu, the Rich C Cream Glow foundation, um, as well as the Ellis Fast, the Veil foundation. All of them, they have a beautiful texture and if applied lightly, they look super natural on the skin. In this case, I'm uh, using the La Mer foundation in a very 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 thin layer because as i said i don't want to cover um anything i just want to um make the um, overall look um, of the skin more um even and um, ready for the um, next layers i will apply in some cases when the when the skin looks perfect um, or when i have when I don't have so many blemishes to cover, I will barely use um, uh, some foundation. Then I'm going in with um, concealer, just a tiny bit of, con of concealer. These are some of my favorites, the Dior um, Forever Skin Correct and the um, Armani Concealer. Also uh, one of my favorites is the NARS Creamy Concealer. Um, but again, I don't abuse them, I just use a touch of them. Uh, in this case, I'm using the Forever um, Skin Correct and the um, Armani Power Fabric um, concealers. And as you can see, I am barely um, using um, um, them on like really where I need them. So I'm not covering the blemishes um, or um, anything else, just again to kind of um, complete that overall um, look of the skin. Um, I do use brushes and I um, also uh, blend when I feel the need uh, with a sponge to make everything look seamless. Um, again around the nose, um, it's an area that I kind of concentrate on because there is some redness there. Um, again a very very light layer. Then I'm going overall with a sponge just to make sure everything is blended out and um, looks perfect. Then I'm going with the um, Makeup Designery, the um, HD Air, the water, the um, uh, airbrush foundation. I'm using three colors to mix them together to make those freckles look um, a little bit more natural. I'm using this trick because, as I said, I don't want to use uh, concealer to cover um, any skin imperfections or uh, blemishes because in, in close-up photography, you will see that product on the skin, you will see that foundation, you will see that um, concealer when you go really close up. And as I said, and also as you can see in my, um, in my work, I do like to see skin texture, I do like to see um, like real looking skin in my photos. Um, and also um, the pictures, the photos I, I inserted here after each look are um, not retouched. So it's exactly the, um, um, the work as I uh, photographed it. Uh, what I did do is some light adjustments, um, some contrast. Um, so again, I'm, I'm really making sure that those freckles are looking as natural as possible, but again, this is an editorial look, so um, and the freckles are uh, faux or fake, um, and um, I mean it should um, it should look like an editorial look. Then again, I'm going on the forehead where um, I had um, or where my model had the most um, texture or um, blemishes, and um, I'm making sure that I'm kind of. Uh, um, covering up those areas with freckles um, and um, so at the end it will look like freckles and not like blemishes. Then to make everything look a little bit more natural I'm taking my sponge again and I'm going a little bit over everything just to um, just for the freckles to not stand out so much. But again, I will apply some more layers uh, on the skin and they will look natural at the end. Going in again with the Makeup Forever Aqua Brow um, for the eyebrows this time. Um, and uh, first of all, I'm just combing the eyebrows to see what I need to do. She has 
really good eyebrows I just kind of need to um, fill them in a tiny bit and make them look a tiny bit deeper as her hair is also darker so I'm just very very lightly applying um, the aqua brow uh, with a very with a flat and narrow brush uh, the colors of the aqua, aqua brow that I'm using are 25 and 30. Uh, I'm using 30 more at the end of the brow and 25 more um, in the beginning of the brow. So it kind of um, looks more natural. Then I'm going in with the Benefit 24 Hours Brow Set uh, to kind of blend everything together and also to set the eyebrows into place. Um, and I'm going first um, against the hair because we also need that product underneath the hair. And then I'm going and combing in those eyebrows into shape and also making sure the aqua brow underneath um, looks as natural as possible and I'm also taking the any excess. Um, also, I'm combing really carefully because the 24... Um, our brow setter does leave some texture behind so um, that's why I'm coming in with the Dior Show um, brow mascara and uh, to kind of take away any white um, any white marks or any white residue from the 24 hour brow setter and again I'm going in with the lighter uh, shade in the beginning of the brow which is uh, 0 to 1 and the darker one at the end of the brow which is um, number 002. Then I'm going in with the Charlotte Tilbury flawless um, Hollywood flawless filter just on the high points um, of the face of the cheeks um, just to bring in a little bit more glow because again for um, editorial we really need that glow um, I'm going in with a brush and blending in any creases because um, it, nothing is set yet and I'm not going to overly set uh, the skin for editorial because I really need everything to be super flexible so I can move it around for the next looks. Going in also on the cupid's bow bridge of the nose um, to make the skin look a little bit more flesh, fresh and, and glowy. Then I'm using um, from uh, Romanova makeup. I'm using the sexy sculpting cream um, in the color light. This is a super super nice uh, cream um, for sculpting the face, and it blends super um, super easy and super fast. As you can see, um, I'm using here my uh, T4 from the Tech series, which is perfect for sculpting the face. Um, also, this um, they have a um, powder version from this uh, sculpting uh, product, and it looks um, again very nice. But I'm starting in slowly with my looks. I don't want to set uh, or use any powdery products from my first look because then it's easier, it's uh, harder to build up um, the next looks. Also, I'm using a smaller brush to contour um, a little bit under the nose. Um, and under the lips, um, again, I don't like any harsh contours. I like everything to be super soft. I like a more um, shaped face and not a contour, like a harsh contoured face. I like everything to look uh, super soft, like a natural shadow. Then I'm also um, bringing, bringing a little bit of shape to the eyes, uh, sculpting in um, and bringing some volume to the eye um, again it's going to be a um, look concentrated on the lips but i still want a tiny bit of definition on the eyes i'm going on with this um, going over with a sponge uh, to make everything look um, seamless again and you'll see me um, once in a while doing this and uh, readjusting and blending because again Everything is cream, everything is flexible, and this is something that I look for in an editorial shoot. So long-lasting products 
are not something I have in my kit when I do this kind of shootings. I like everything to be super, um, super flexible so I can move it around. Again, I'm going with the, with the cream uh, contour underneath the eyes to make um, them appear a tiny bit bigger, but without looking that I applied a lot of product there. Then I'm using the um, Nabla Cosmetics, the Skin Glazing um, Highlighter um, Ozone. I'm using this um, on the inner corners, on the eyelid, just again to bring more um, shape to the eye and a little bit more light. And also because I am um, into that kind of uh, glossy, wet looking eyelid um, in the moment. And also because it will... Um, look good with the lip um, I will apply after that. Next I'm coming in with the NARS um, blush cream blush in um, the shade luster um, it's one of my favorite uh, formulations and also colors because it's matte but it's very easily um, uh, you apply it very easily and it blends very easily so i i really like that color also the color is um, super nice um, i'm very into those peachy uh, tones as i think everyone is <laughs> making sure with a sponge everything is blended out and then I'm using the tiniest amount of powder this is the um, Shiseido loose powder um, it's very very light and it has a light reflecting um, property um, and you barely see it on the skin so as you can see I'm, I'm, I'm applying the tiniest amount of that um, underneath the eyes and also side of the nose are um, important um, because they, I mean, glow is nice, but not exactly on those areas. Then I'm using the um, Armani Eyes to Kill Mascara for a very light layer because, again, focus will be on the lips. Um, this is one of my favorite mascaras. Um, it does have a, um, a normal brush, so not the plasticky one. So it kind of coats the um, eyelashes very nicely. And it's a good all-around mascara. And I tend to grab it a lot. Then I'm making sure um, the, um, the, uh, the eyelashes are really nicely coated. Um, and after that, I will come and uh, comb any excess again. Um, as, again, I just want... Um, the eyelashes to be a tiny bit um, accentuated but not to come uh, forward as much as um, the lips will be the focus again i'm combing that um, the eyebrow the eyelashes through so it doesn't um, they don't have any clumps and if i have any kind of um, mascara mistakes then i i usually take a sp a tiny spoon a sp uh, spoolie to take that off and not a q-tip because um, I will also take the foundation away then I'm using the NARS um, power matte lip pigment in worm leatherette and rock with you I'm mixing them together um, so I get that uh, deeper plummy uh, burgundy shape um, I am not um, going again this um, I didn't plan a hundred percent this look so I didn't um, know exactly how if I wanted a sharp contour for the lips or if I wanted a blurry lip or if I wanted a um, ombre lip this is a, um, a natural work process that I go through and you'll see also for the other looks that I try different products um, and sometimes they're not working and I'm I'm trying to correct that um, as you can see in this case, for example, I used the, um, um, a brush to kind of hold my lip uh, in place. Then I left a mark on, on the skin and then I'm not, <laughs> I'm not touching that face anymore, not with the finger, but I am going to, to retouch that mark. So 
um, again when everything when the skin is still um, it's not set and everything is creamy you have to be careful not to touch um, the skin too much um, so you'll because you'll move everything around so now my first my main um, uh, goal is to just fill up the lips um, um, the natural contour of the lips so I'm not any, doing any correction or going over the lines um, as with most of the deeper um, lipsticks um, they are not uh, always the um, like the best from the first layer this is why I'm going in with multiple layers and I'm slowly building up um, the color then I'm going with my micro blender and I decided I wanted a, a more blurry lip so I'm going with a little bit of lipstick all around the edges to blur that um, line and make it um, a little bit more uh, pouty looking because um, this way when you have a blurry lip contour you can easily go away with uh, making the lips looking a little bit bigger by drawing over the contour as you can see here um, it's not that obvious that I went um, over the lip lines so again on the other side um, I'm working slowly um, on buffing away and blurring that lip line um, now I'm going in a little bit closer <laughs> as um, that angle of the face I'm right-handed and always that part of the face you really need to double check because it's not in your field of vision necessarily so you kind of need to go um, over and look if ev everything looks right and everything looks symmetrical so this is why now I'm really going into um, like closer to see if everything looks good um, and I really took um, I didn't cut so much out of this lip application so, so you will see exactly the process that I'm going through um, when applying um, a lip product then I'm filling in and making that uh, color look more opaque because again um, it's a darker lip color so it kind of needs more layers and you see by um, the end of the look um, I will correct that even more um, and also for the second look Now I'm coming in with again Romanova makeup. This is a um, sexy nude powder in the color medium. Um, it's a very uh, it's a light reflect reflecting baked powder, uh, so it's very nice and it has a super super light shimmer to it. So I'm going again with a micro blender everywhere around that lip contour to make it look even more blurred out and. Um, uh, to make it more uh, like a little bit ombre um, effect like a, a an ombre effect for the contour of the lips again this is not something that I planned at the beginning of the look but it's something that comes um, with the creative process when you look overall at the lip and um, it's not something this is what I did I looked and it I wasn't completely satisfied with how that lip was looking so I wanted even more um, an even more blurred out effect so this is why I went um, with the powder after and as you can see it looks very nice and um, blurry can I say blurry one more time now I'm going with the uh, Nabla ozone uh, highlighter just on the cupid's bow to make everything stands out stand out because um, yeah, highlighter on the cupid's bow always looks beautiful now you have some um, <laughs> some nice finishing poses and um, at the end you will see also uh, the photos I took um, of the, this look um, and for the first two you'll see um, I haven't retouched anything I left everything as it is um, but if you want to see the retouched photos you can always go in my feed because they're um, I am posting a more refined version of the look and I inserted one actually here so you can see the difference between a raw and retouched so this would be just um, this would be the the retouched finished version of this look <laughs> 